Hudson and Todd here. We're ready for some Todd's tips. So why don't you give us this week's Todd's tips? Well, we've been covering some do's and don'ts, some things that I do and some things that I don't. And uh, we've been doing that for, I don't know, maybe eight to 10 weeks. Demand is always putting our little caveats right here so that you can feel no pressure to do it exactly like I do it. I do tell you, though, as you read this list, that uh, these do make things specific to me, but there are some supra-industry um, points that I try to bring. And uh, some of the things I say each week would be part of that. Some are more specific to me. It's up to you to kind of take those uh, things that I do and don't do and apply those to your <clears throat> business, your voiceover business. And so today I want to talk with you about the fact that I do still get burned by low ball clients. I still do get burned by low ball clients. I'm not the only one. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I'm, you know, I might be unusual and I'll get into that uh, somewhat here in a few minutes. But Kind of as a preface, kind of as a lead in, there's a war and I'll call it a war. It's not physical, but it is a war of words and ideas and philosophies, uh, a war that's raging in the VO industry. There are those who decry the movement in voiceover toward a lower bar to entry because of the internet, because you can just grab a microphone and get a DAW, digital audio workstation, and you can fire off voiceover, uh, you know, things, uh, audio files and stuff all over the world. You can get work. And so there's uh, uh, those that don't like that at all. They don't like that movement toward the lower bar of entry, and they don't like the lower prices that have come for a lot of people in the industry. More people in the industry, and of course, that means there are going to be some people that aren't as talented. Maybe they don't have the experience, uh, and they're getting hired, and maybe they're taking some jobs away from some people. Mm -hmm. And there's people that don't like the fact that the prices are getting lower. Mm -hmm. And then there are those who view the uh, VO industry no different than any other industry. Uh, they're free capitalists, if you will. And so they believe in a free capitalistic market. The system, in their minds, is just like any other industry. It's based on supply and demand. And suppliers are free to charge whatever they like, and then people meet that you know, demand. Buyers determine what they're going to pay. And so that's the other side of the coin. And so there's a lot of back and forth. And I can understand people's points of view. I personally would probably err on the side of the free market. My thought is, why should the VO industry be any different than any other industry? Whether it's the restaurant or retail or building or whatever. And so I charge what I think that the demand for my services are worth. And for this reason and another, I still get burned by low ball clients, even after 12 years in the industry. To be specific, I get burned by clients who want to negotiate for two reasons. Here are the two reasons. First, I want to work. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. I like to work. I want to work. If my day isn't filled up, and I don't mean eight hours of, of, of being in the studio, but at least three or four, <laughs> um, then I'll take a job that maybe is lower than what you might take, or it might be lower than the industry standard, or it might be lower than I would normally take yep. mm -hmm. if I'm very busy. But I do want to work. And so sometimes people will take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Second, I can still be a bleeding heart, even though I should know better. Um, just a real quick illustration this last week, and this, this happens from time to time, on Fiverr. A person from another country contacted me. I quoted him $125 for a very short piece. And he said, the most I have is $75. Well, my first thought should have been, no, I'm not going to do it. Because I should, I should know this by now. I should see them a mile away. Because sometimes of... they get sometimes they surprise me, but most of the time, when the first thing out of a person's mouth is, I can't. I can't pay that. Can you do it for less? That should be dee 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 saying, don't touch this with a 10 foot pole. Just say, sorry, that's my price. I can't go anywhere with that. But I'm a bleeding heart. This guy gave me a little bit of a sob story. I said, okay, 
I'll do it for you. Guess what happened? He burned you. He burned me. And yeah. What is that? What? How did he burn you? Like, just what are some of the things you say that like that should be a siren going off in your head? Yeah. Um. What about for somebody like me who needs the work? Well, you you've been burned too, so you can fill in. You can yeah. fill in the in the blanks uh-huh. here. But but one is revisions. A mm-hmm. big thing is revisions. Like you'd think, okay, you're getting it for about half price. Not that I do a sloppy job. I do just as good a job as if I was being paid five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. But right away. I just knew it. I woke up to revisions. Mm -hmm. And this particular guy wasn't as bad as some, but very picky. And so that's the big thing. It's like, okay, if I'm going to do this for you, you're asking for a favor. I'm doing you a favor. You can't afford me. So what you should be is pretty happy with whatever job you get. Sorry, that's just the way it should be. Or he'd have to go and find somebody like me or or even maybe worse, uh, not as experienced, I guess I should say. And he might not get as good of a product because let's be honest, you've been doing it for 13 years. So getting a $125 voiceover artist for $75 is better than getting somebody who's maybe a $50 voiceover person. If You know what I mean? If they're, yeah. if they're not, that's just what they'd be dealing with. And so- Anyway, yeah, there might be there might be people that are really really talented that are just having to kind of work their way up the food chain, and they they might be better than I am right now. There probably are lots of people out there, but that's one of the things. Um, you know, the, the, to me, that's the biggest thing: um, how you get burned. Um, doing, off of doing more work than you would normally. Yeah, is, right. Is having to do right. more reads, more right. reads, more reads, and talking with them and try this out or this does sounds like this. And it's like, well, I work with people that mm-hmm. are higher, you know, brands than you are and they never have a problem with that. So. Yeah. And that, that can happen. I agree with that. That can happen off of Fiverr too. It's happened to be off of Fiverr and off of other platforms. It's not specific to Fiverr. It seems to happen more on Fiverr, but um, it's happened off. The pattern is that what we have is we have people who have high-end jobs, high-end end clients, and they know what they want. And so their copy is good. They've chosen the right uh, person for it. And so, boom, you do it. It's done. They hardly ever look back. They're not picky. And then you have other people that don't do well in their mm. writing of their mm-hmm. script, so they don't really know what they want. So once they hear it or see it with the video, they want revisions and on and on and on. And so the thing is, is oftentimes the low ballers are the ones who are going to be the most difficult, which mm-hmm. should seem like the opposite, but yeah. it's not. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, people can chime in and say, well, if you'd set your, you know, if you'd set your standard the way it should be, you'd help us, that is the industry, mm-hmm. and you wouldn't hurt yourself. You wouldn't have to go through this. Yeah. But I make plenty of money by doing it the way I do. And I do still get burned, Mm -hmm. but not as much as I do by taking those jobs. Yeah. And maybe there are some people that are in the voiceover world that have stories like that. And if you do feel free to share them in the comments, we'd like to hear kind of your voiceover horror stories. I know that's not really a horror story. There's worse, lots, lots worse, Mm -hmm. like not being paid and stuff like that, or having canceled orders, stuff like that. But if you do, Feel free to put it in there because we'd like to hear, Yeah, you know. Yeah. I, 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 so as I close up, I do, maybe like you do from time to time, I do still get burned by low ball clients. Well, thank you for that. That's insightful. So as always, John will be here for our next video for our numbers. So that's been our Todd's tips for this week. So thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you next week for more Todd's tips. Did you like that video? Check out more from the original Father-Son VoiceOver podcast right over here. Or subscribe to our channel right here.